Jessica Price fired Guild Wars 2 developer who verbally attacked members of the community and twisted the narrative to be about gender issue to excuse her toxic behavior is back at it again, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't been keeping up with what's been going on, just watch my previous videos on the matter and come back, as I won't be recapping anything this time. I'm just going to dive straight into a new series of tweets that Jessica posted in response to all that's happened since she was let go from ArenaNet. Here's what she had to say. Hi everyone, I've got a thing to say and then I'm going back off Twitter for a bit because I've had a vacation planned for a while and I intend to take it to the fullest. You can respond if you want, but I've got any notifications from people I don't follow muted and I'm not going to check responses. If you're a legit industry press person and want to get in contact, we have mutual networks through which you can do that. So right off the bat, I want to comment on the fact that she's asking for the attention of strangers, but won't lend an ear to them. As per usual, Jessica continues to prove that she is a one-way street personified. She wants people to be empathetic towards her, while not offering the same empathy in return. She even said in her recent interview with Polygon that she's not reading reactions, and that there's nothing worth reading from bots and strangers on Twitter the very people she's appealing to with her tweets. Jessica's the kind of person who can dish it, but can't take it. Something that's represented in every way she's dealt with this situation. When she's the one dishing insults, toxicity, harassment, and mobs against anyone who so much as politely disagrees with her, then it's justice. But when she gets a taste of her own medicine, then it's sexism. Anyway, she continued, Here's the thing you should be noting if you're a game dev. Much of the narrative around this has been around 1. That I was fired, and 2. Whether there was warning or discussion. That's missing a big portion of this, so let's talk about not how I was fired, but how it was announced. It's worth noting that Jessica was the one who reached out to biased media outlets to make a big point about how she was allegedly fired without being given the chance to make her argument, saying that there was zero reason for Mike O'Brien who is her boss and employer, to be there when the firing took place, claiming that all he wanted was to vent his anger and give himself the power to command a woman to stand there while he took his feelings out on her, and calling the whole ordeal highly unprofessional. But sure, now that she's spread her defamatory piece, let's shift the conversation again. Now let's focus on how Jessica's firing was announced. God, she continued, the announcement was an escalation. The company could have chosen to say, their remarks don't represent the company, we don't agree with what they said, and they're no longer with the company. That's not what they did. They framed an interaction on my personal social media, in which I told a few individuals who I thought were being assholes that I wasn't on the clock and wasn't going to feign affection for people who are being assholes, as attacks on the community. Yeah, ArenaNet didn't frame anything, Jessica. They correctly pointed out how when someone politely reached out with feedback, you lash back and publicly berated him by insinuating that he was being sexist before calling inquisitive Guild Wars 2 community members rando asshats. No framing took place whatsoever. ArenaNet simply pointed out exactly what happened. You attacked the community. Jessica continued, They knew, or at least had a responsibility to know in 2018, what would happen to a female game dev who was fired in response to an exchange about sexism. It would have been bad enough if they had just fired me and announced I was fired. But they escalated. They pointed to Peter and me as enemies of the community. That wasn't just firing us and, oh well, if they get harassed, them's the breaks. That was active solicitation of harassment. And their silence in condemning the harassment is profoundly telling. There was a fair amount of criticism directed at major game companies in 2014 to 2015 for not standing up for their female marginalized employees, but their failure there was passive. None of them escalated the harassment of developers in this way. They were aware that I was going to get de with threats, harassment, etc. The firing wasn't the punishment, the use of the mob was. It is rich that Jessica has the audacity to argue escalation when she fails to consider that she herself escalated what could have been an amicable exchange with members of the Guild Wars 2 community. This whole ordeal began with Jessica publicly making Derar out to be an enemy of female game developers in the gaming industry in front of over 10,000 of her followers, which sure as hell sounds like active solicitation of harassment on her part, the very thing she's shunning ArenaNet for. 
Let me rephrase your own statement, Jessica. You know, or at least had a responsibility to know in 2018 what would happen to a game developer who went out of their way to publicly insult and berate members of the community you represent for no reason. Yeah, you were obviously gonna get shit for it. The community was obviously not going to take that sitting down. Now, as for whether Mike O'Brien actively solicited harassment by citing how the fired employees' attacks on the community were unacceptable, while I can see how it could be argued that Mike could have simply left it at two of our employees failed to uphold our standards so we let them go, I think to say that what Mike said in his statement was actively solicitating harassment is a gross exaggeration. Unlike Jessica, who highlighted the Twitter user she had a beef with before falsely insinuating he made sexist remarks, Mike simply addressed the community that was verbally attacked directly by being blunt about exactly what happened and what actions have been taken. He said that two employees who he didn't directly name, by the way, engaged with the community in a way that was unacceptable, correctly used the word attacks, and simply reassured everyone that the situation has been handled, and that unlike what Jessica Price and Peter Fry seem to be insinuating in their tweets, ArenaNet does value polite feedback from the community. At no point did Mike exaggerate the gravity of the situation or the nature of the controversial Twitter exchange in question. At no point did Mike directly name people or link to anyone's social media accounts. At no point did Mike encourage harassment. He simply addressed an understandably agitated community and told them exactly what happened without sugarcoating or downplaying the situation. To say that is intentional escalation or active solicitation of harassment is, if you ask me, ridiculous. And for Jessica to continue to focus on how ArenaNet dealt with her firing without any introspective insight on her own actions is hypocrisy at its finest. I'm not trying to say that Jessica hasn't faced unwarranted harassment after this all blew up in her face, and if it were up to me, I would want the vicious attacks against her to stop, especially given how hypocritical it is for someone to shun Jessica and then proceed to act just like her, if not worse. But we live in a world where when once controversial actions are made public knowledge, there will always be a toxic group of people who will resort to harassment. Ultimately, it wasn't Mike who instigated the backlash Jessica's currently facing, not even close. Jessica did that herself with her own public controversial actions. Backlash against her was well underway before Mike deliberated to fire her from his company. Sure, the firing did cause even more buzz around the issue, which inevitably drew even more toxic crowds. But that's something that couldn't have been mitigated even if Mike had opted against correctly pointing out that the attacks on the community were unacceptable. It's not as if Jessica hasn't been doing her fair share of escalations with the way she's been responding and what she's been telling to biased members of the press. Throughout her press releases and interviews, she's been spreading the message that ArenaNet is an unsafe workplace for women, that the way she was fired was highly unprofessional. Yeah, she actually used the words highly unprofessional given her circumstances. That she's been contacted by peers who told her that they'd steer people away from working at arena net so on and so forth does Jessica think that what she's doing won't instigate toxic members to harass ArenaNet? Why is it that when Mike tries to communicate what's happened from his perspective, it's labeled as actively soliciting harassment, but when Jessica does the same, it's not? How hypocritical is that? At least Mike is telling it straight, politely, and reasonably, without exaggerating or sugarcoating anything. Whereas Jessica is twisting the narrative to center around gender issues and throwing around baseless claims and accusations. The thing is, as I said, when a dispute becomes public, there will always be strong feedback and unfortunate harassment on both sides. Granted, in this case, it's probably safe to say that Jessica has it much worse than Mike and ArenaNet. But it's not because Mike weaponized the mob or some sensationalist bullshit like that. People with common sense simply looked at the situation and logically came to the conclusion that Jessica was at fault here, with or without Mike's comments. Jessica then responded by insulting and lashing at the crowd, by trying to bullshit them by making it about gender, and by resorting to shady methods, which only fanned the flames against her even further. They pointed to Peter and me as enemies of the community, my ass, you did that yourself. Moving on, Jessica then expressed concern about the precedent this all set, stating the following, And I'm not sure what they can possibly do to reassure their employees, let alone every other dev in the industry whose backs they've painted targets on, that they won't use the mob to punish any employee who they feel has gotten too uppity. So again, the notion that ArenaNet used the mob as a weapon is ridiculous. 
The only cautionary tale here comes from Jessica, who taught us that if you're a developer who insults the community you represent, expect the community to push back on their own. And just as a general rule for life, if you engage with hostility, expect to get hostility in return. As for ArenaNet and Mike O'Brien, by firing Jessica and Peter, the message is that if you want to work for a company that values the community, learn to respect the community, to act decently and professionally towards them, and to learn to take polite feedback without resorting to insults or public smearing. The basic message is don't be an asshole, which I think is a fair stipulation for anyone working at any company. From there, Jessica proceeded to once again twist the narrative in her favor by stating this, Oh, one more thing, Mike O'Brien's most recent statement reduces my contribution to Guild Wars 2 to one scene from one episode. Given how often women's work is erased or minimized, that's especially egregious, so for the record, everything in Guild Wars 2 is made by a team. There is no content that's made by one person. But in terms of influence, the entire season is mine. I led the season's story-breaking meetings, I led the episode outlining meetings, and every line of dialogue went through me. Everything you've seen of the story so far this season is my work, and you're going to be seeing my work in it for a long time. A bunch of the content you'll be seeing is also work led by women, female team and game design leads, female writing leads, female cinematic leads. It's the best content Guild Wars 2 has produced. Women in this industry lead and aren't going anywhere. I'm not going to name them because I don't want to direct the mob at them. So here's yet another example of Jessica's uncanny ability to underhandedly twist anything into being about gender for personal gain. For those who don't know what she's talking about, she's referring to the extensive statement that Mike O'Brien gave to website Polygon, where he thoroughly addressed why he ultimately deliberated to fire the two employees. In a very polite, sensible, well-spoken manner, he basically pointed out that Jessica identified herself as an ArenaNet employee on Reddit and Twitter. She was talking about matters relating to Guild Wars 2. She was representing the company, and in turn, the expectation was for her to be respectful or not to engage. But instead, she openly attacked a member of the community who engaged them respectfully and professionally. Towards the end, he left things off on a positive note by stating that despite everything, he wants to remember Jessica and Peter for their contributions to Guild Wars 2, highlighting how they were part of the team that brought players the kidnapping scene from Episode 1, which he noted was a wonderfully well-executed scene. Notice how Mike makes use of the word also in this sentence to clearly imply that this was simply one of many examples of things that Jessica and Peter worked on. I think you will agree that nothing about Mike's statement gives off the impression that he's trying to downplay the scale of their contributions. It just comes across as an employer complimenting people he worked with and pointing to one of the cool things they worked on to that effect. But naturally, Jessica being Jessica, she will take something very simple and innocent and blow it way out of proportion. In this case to twist Mike's compliment and make it about erasing or minimizing women's work, once again shifting the narrative to gender issue. It's exactly what she did with Deroir's polite feedback, it's exactly what she's done with her account on how she was fired, and she's done it once again with Mike's polite compliments. Jessica's argument doesn't even make sense when you consider that Mike mentioned both Jessica and Peter in his compliments. He referenced both a female and male employee, so how can she begin to insinuate that Mike's comments about their contributions has anything to do with gender or trying to minimize or erase women's work? I would also like to point out for the record that ArenaNet has on numerous occasions acknowledged and defended women's role in the gaming industry. Earlier this year, on March 9th, 2018, ArenaNet's official Twitter page posted a response to a sexist Twitter comment that read, quote, These 45 women, four of them team leads, are only some of the women at ArenaNet. They represent almost all departments here. Design, programming, production, localization, marketing, QA, art, narrative, HR, C. Yes. When you play our games, you're experiencing women's work and expertise. Jessica herself responded to the sexist comment, and I think her response to this particular incident was apt. She actually stood up for her cause when it made sense to do so. And guess what? Jessica was never fired for this incident because, again, there's a difference between speaking up about issues and berating someone for no reason. 
I honestly don't know how Jessica can claim with a straight face that ArenaNet wants to erase or minimize women's work in the gaming industry. Once again, it's about twisting the narrative and blowing things out of proportion to elevate herself. It's about exploiting gender issue to make herself seem like she has the moral high ground. It's about using sexism as a shield for personal gain to hide her own screw-ups. Jessica finally concluded her tweets with a warning. Anyway, if you're a dev in this industry, take a very careful look at what ArenaNet has done and get a guarantee from your management that they're not going to do it to you. And now I'm going out to lunch and then on a very well-earned vacation. See you later. Honestly, it's very simple if you're a developer in the industry, as long as you're respectful to your peers and to your community, as long as you act like a decent human being, you'll be fine. There are those out there who are making this whole ordeal to be earth-shattering for developers in the gaming industry, and no small part due to the grossly overblown narrative Jessica's been spreading. But it's a case of somebody having stepped out of line with her behavior, and suffering consequences. While I'm sure the severity of the consequences will be a sticking point for many of you, while there will be a wide variety of opinions in that regard, there is no denying at the very least that the ultimate cause for Jessica's downfall was Jessica herself. Maybe it's a good thing that Jessica will have a chance to go on a vacation. Maybe it will help her cool her head off and give her some time to reflect, to grow as a person. But given the kind of person she's proven to be, given what she said in her latest string of tweets, given how she insists on exploding gender issue to manipulate the masses, given her overall toxic aura, I cannot say I'm confident she'll be any less unpleasant when she returns. Anyway, these are all just one man's thoughts and opinions. I'd love to hear what your take is on Jessica's latest tweets in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my content and would like to support this channel directly, consider donating on Patreon. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.